it's good to be back. So Adobe XD update for September has dropped, dropped, dropped. <laughs> Such a fail. Let's just, let's just jump into it. Hey guys, you're watching Dansky, the place to be to develop your creative skills. This is the new place to develop your creative skills and mine. This is my new studio. I hope you like it. It's a bit more white, clean, and we've got a nice little blue light over there. So we've got some blue going on, but it's taken a while to get this set up and I can't wait to get back to making videos because I love doing this. And today we're going to be looking at Adobe XD. The September update has dropped and we're just going to jump straight into this now go through some of the changes, and then you can download the update and just get cracking and have fun. All right then, let's jump into this. So you can see on screen, we've got the lovely title at the top, responsive resize, timed transitions, and more. How intriguing. Let's scroll down. And I will link this blog post in the description if you'd like to check this out for yourself. And as always, they have some videos for each of the different points in the update, and it basically talks about everything that's changed, it shows you how to use the new feature. So if you can't wait for me to get around to making a video on each of these things we're going to be covering, then definitely check out the videos in the blog post linked in the description because these videos are great and they just they bring you up to speed in like four or five minutes. They're really quick videos, but they tell you everything you need to know about the new features. So definitely check them out. Anyway, let's go back up. Responsive resize. So essentially, this is something I've been waiting for for a long time and it's a huge, huge time saver. So in Adobe XD, normally you create your mobile artboard, you create your tablet artboard, your, de your desktop artboard, your big web one, whatever it is, and you design between each of them to make sure that what you're creating works across all of the devices. Today, we've got like a billion different devices and we've got to make sure that what we're creating works on all of those different platforms. So with responsive resize, what this enables us to do is, for example, start with a mobile concept and just wireframe or design that one up so it's looking great. And then we can stretch that artboard and we get some resizing options that we can then apply to the content on that artboard. So for example, you might have your menu icon top left, a search icon top right, your logo in the middle. And as you stretch the artboard, certain elements like the menu and search icon will snap to the corners of the screen and the logo will stay in the center. So literally within a few seconds, you've got your mobile version here. You can just stretch it out. All the content resizes intelligently to fit that artboard. And then you can stretch it out even more and get to your desktop size. And again, it just constantly keeps stretching out and resizing the content to fit the artboard that it's on. Conversely, if you start with a web artboard, so something really, really big, you add all your content, you've got like four or five different columns of content, like loads and loads of content going down the page. As you squish that artboard together into a tablet format, it will start wrapping that content, like wrapping like that. So <laughs> let's, uh, let's never do that again. This is like I'm holding some kind of orb. Could we like edit some kind of orb in my hands? Anyway, come on, stay focused, Dan. So you've got your tablet content and you might have two or three columns and then you keep shrinking that artboard until it is something like a smartphone and then everything is just one column and it wraps. Kind of like when you type text into a paragraph box, it just wraps onto the next line. It's very similar with content. So you can essentially come up with the design, set all your resizing options, whether you're going to be having it auto resize or whether you set it to manual resize just for a bit more control. And as you adjust the size of your artboard, make it wider, whatever it is, XD is going to intelligently try to resize the content for you. Huge time saver and like I say, with all the devices we've got out there today, it just makes it so much easier to make all of these responsive considerations much earlier on in the process, rather than kind of doing all the design work, making it look pretty, you get to the end of the process and think, eh, ah, bugger, that doesn't really work on a mobile device or it doesn't really look great on a desktop. You can consider all this much earlier in the process and then at the end, you've considered everything. It works on mobile, tablet, small tablet, big tablet, big screen, huge screen. It just works on everything and you can just then go and add the design, the icing on the cake, if you will, and you know that you've considered all of the responsive fundamentals much earlier in the process. And if I just scroll down here a little bit as well, something it talks about at the bottom, 
it says here, there are many ways responsive design can be used to speed up the process for designing for multiple devices, including the ability to pin a button or icon to a corner, fix elements to the edges of your design, and fix the padding of a design to keep an icon size and position intact. Something else that is new to XD is timed transitions. So essentially this is great for if you have an app with like an onboarding process or a decision flow, as it suggests in the article here, and you can add a time delay to your artboard. So for example, someone could click on a button and then there will be a two second time delay before that transition happens. And then you could have multiple transitions happening afterwards and there will be a set delay. So it could be one second, two second, three second. So we've got the ability now to add in time delays between and on different artboards. Something else that is new to XD in this update is spelling and grammar because None of us can type anymore. We're too reliant on our little smartphones. We're all terrible at English. Our grammar is awful. So Adobe XD is here to the rescue to help us correct our grammar, just so we can, you know, spell words correctly and stuff. So if I just scroll down here, you can see this spell check. And there's a video here on how it works. I think if you go to edit at the top of the screen, on a Mac anyway, you can enable spelling and grammar. Look for that little checkbox. And then you can highlight certain words that may be spelt incorrectly and then by the looks of it, you can just right click and it gives you a list of alternatives. But anyway, there is a video there where you can check that one out as well. Okay, so the last thing we're going to cover is web prototype full screen viewing. So essentially when you view your prototype in a browser on mobile or tablet, it's really easy. It just sits there in the middle and usually those mobile artboards are smaller than the laptop or the desktop that you're actually viewing it on. So it sits in the middle, no issues. If it's a web or a custom prototype, one of the changes that they've made now is that the design will start from the very top of the browser without any kind of padding and also the black bars down the side, those are now white bars. So they're very similar to the normal background color of most browsers, which is of course white. So it's much easier to see where the design starts and where it ends. And of course this change in background color extends to full screen mode as well. And as it says in the blog post, this is really done to just eliminate unnecessary confusion. And there we go. That concludes the September update for Adobe XD. And something else that's worth mentioning is that Andrew Shorten did tease on Twitter that the October update for Adobe XD, which coincides with Adobe Max, is going to be larger than all of the other updates this year. So every month we get an update for Adobe XD. This October update for Max is going to be bigger than all of them potentially. So that's pretty exciting. I've got a few predictions on what I think might be in that update. I'd love to see something a bit more advanced with animation, but we're gonna have to wait and see. But if you're someone like me who uses Adobe XD a lot, this is pretty exciting stuff. But I'm curious, what do you think is gonna be part of the Adobe XD update for October? Let me know along with any questions or comments down below. But, whew, it's good to be back. Like this video if you enjoyed it, take care and I'll see you next time.